All right. Welcome, everyone, to today's Webmaster Central Office Hours Hangout. Uh, my name is John Mueller. I am a Webmaster Trends Analyst at Google. And today, I have two guests, and maybe more. We'll see. Uh, first off, we have Lizzie, who writes a lot of our documentation. So she, she's the one that makes sure that all of you have, especially the structured data information that you need to make sure that that's all aligned and that that works really well. And we have Martin. She's the one that makes sure that all of you have, especially the structured data, you have an echo. Uh, whoops. Um, I don't know. Do you want to uh, yeah. add an introduction? Sure. Like, what do you do at Google? Uh, hi there. Uh, I'm Martin. I annoy Google by coming in and annoying them whenever I possibly can. Uh, I'm currently an SEO consultant, but um, have done seven years of being head of SEO at various bits of Expedia. Um, prior to that, was head of SEO for Omnicom. So I have some big brand experience, and I'm normally the one complaining about the documentation. So. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll stay in the middle. <laughs> cool. All right. So, I mean, as always, there are a bunch of questions that were submitted. I set this up fairly short term because I/O was happening this week, and so many things were happening. I wasn't sure that I'd be able to get to to do something like this. Uh, but I'm glad we have it running now. Uh, so. There are some questions submitted, but if any of you who are here live want to ask first questions, feel free to go for it. While we're waiting for any of them to jump okay. in, I will get us started with just a first question. Uh, I understand you announced at IO this week some cool new features that come to Search Console, specifically around the site speed. Um, I was just wondering if you could talk to that a little bit more uh, when the rest of us are likely to get it, um, and specifically what the source of data is that you're using in that. Um, so when is always a tricky question. We, we obviously wanted to kind of open it up at I.O. and have it all ready. But uh, there's still some things that we're working out where we'd like to get more feedback from people, uh, which is why we set up that uh, trusted tester form. Mm -hmm. So I, I sign up there. You're probably the first one to sign up. OK. And Barry is probably, yeah. you and Barry were probably fighting for the first place. Um, I, I don't know what we've said specifically about the data. My understanding is it's based on a Chrome user experience report. Data. So making it a little bit easier to, to get into there. Yeah. OK. Is there any, uh, so are there any other cool things from Search Console that were announced that I may have missed? That were announced. So uh, how to and FAQs. How to and FAQ reports. They're coming to Search Console. Cool. So similar to the other enhancements that are in there. They're there now. They're not I coming. think they're here. They're there. If you have how to and FAQ on your Oh, you need to add the yeah, markup for this. I have but seen I have seen another sign, the FAQ markup, so yes. Okay. Yep. Cool. That that'll be there. Then there, there are two things that are happening where I don't know exactly when when they will come that we, we talked about briefly. On the one hand, the opt-in for large images. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something if you have large images and you want to have them shown in search, then you can do that. And the other thing is for duplex on the web. Uh, the, the settings for that. So in particular, the aim is, so, so duplex on the web is a way to kind of streamline your checkout flow uh, so that people can go to their Google Assistant and say, like, I, I want to buy this ticket from Expedia. And it basically goes off and does everything for you. So I think, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and uh, the setting there is mostly a, a test account so that you can specify a test account, username, password uh, that the, the machine learning system will use to kind of learn the checkout flow. Cool. So that, that's something where I, I think for both of those, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And some of that might change over time. Uh, but that's at least what we've announced so far at, at I.O. John, I was a little bit confused by the duplex being in Google Search Console because there's duplex settings in Google My Business also. Like, do you want to get the phone calls? Is that going to move also, or are you going to have settings for both places in both locations? Um, we we specifically have it in Search Console because it's tied to your website, and we kind of it's it's something that could be available directly through Search as well. 
Uh, so that's why you put it in, in Search Console and not in Google My Business, where Google My Business is more tied to like a physical business. So for that, it makes sense to have the, the phone call setting there. Uh, but the duplex on the web is really tied to your website, which might or might not have a phone number that you can also call. So, right. Those so are thinking about like making a reservation or ordering food online from a local restaurant. Does it use their online form or does it make a phone call or something else to make that reservation? The so based on what we showed at I/O, it's it uses essentially your your web checkout flow. Okay. Which is what we're like the machine learning systems are, are trying to learn and um, trying to kind of do it in a way that is almost a, a higher level autocomplete and that it goes through multiple steps. Outside of the kind of standard accessibility guidelines, are there any guidelines specifically for forms that you want to be included in this or will they be coming? Is that or is it just um, a matter of wait and see? So the, the team wants to be able to work with websites as they are. Yeah. So that's that's the general goal. I, I think we, I mean, we, we obviously have various accessibility guidelines for forms to make it easier to auto-complete them. Um, those are things to, to do in any case. But specifically for this, this feature, we want to work with websites how, how they are and not require that they make any specific changes. All right. Any other questions from any of you who are joining here live? Can we talk about Googlebot a little bit? Googlebot, OK. OK, so it went live technically two days ago, the new Googlebot, the new Evergreen Googlebot? Well, we've been testing it for a while. So it's hard to say like it went live, because there's always this kind of transition period. So when did it go 100% live, or still transitioning? I I don't, I don't know. I, I need to have the other Martin here. But my understanding is it's a, it's 100% live. Uh, the, the only things that, that are not live yet are the testing tools. Uh, so in particular, the struct, what is it? The inspect URL inspection tool and the mobile friendly structured data. Mobile friendly test, yeah. So I mean, it's it's a bit weird that those aren't ready yet, but uh, we we need to make sure that the normal crawling and indexing works first, and then we switch those over too. So I expect that won't be too long, but I can't make promises for them. And SEOs could expect a little bit fluctuations in the search results just because you're able to index a little bit deeper than you were ever beforehand. No, I. I think websites that we could index before, they shouldn't see any change at all. This is really just for websites that are using or focusing on kind of these modern features in browsers that have content which we would otherwise have missed with the older version of Chrome. Well, that's, that's the point, meaning now you're able to get to other websites or other content that you weren't able to. So maybe those websites are now potentially ranking a little bit higher and then pushing down some other websites. So they may have an impact. There may be, or maybe not. I mean, you've obviously done tests on this, so. Yeah, I, I doubt you would see a big effect on that. So that's something where a lot of the, the websites that are already kind of in competitive areas, they already try to make their content so that it works in search anyway. So I, I could imagine there there's some websites that are a bit, I, I don't know, focusing more on modern technologies. And obviously, in those areas, perhaps things shuffle around a little bit. But for the most part, I don't see that changing anything in any way that people would notice. I, I think this was announced to IO during part of the announcement, but is it now using HTTP2 exclusively? Or? No. Okay. Any thoughts on when that may or may not happen? Um, the, so HTTP2 makes a lot of sense, in particular for uh, for browsers, where you have kind of this like multiple streams coming in at the same time, and for crawling and indexing, we don't really need it so much because we we cache a lot of the content anyway. Uh, so it's not the case that we need to kind of like do one quick fetch and render of the page with all of its embedded content right away. It's something that we could do independently and, and keep that content and kind of splice it together when we need it. So. Yeah, so it's it's something we, we do bring up with the team because everyone's like, oh, but 
you're saying I should move to HTTP2 or support it, but you don't support it. Like, what, what's up? Um, but uh, that, I, I mean, it, it's all backwards compatible anyway, so that shouldn't be any problem. And before I'm going to stop after this last question on Googlebot, a lot of people are asking, I see at least on Twitter, about two waves of crawling for some JavaScript web apps, and that's not changing. Could you explain that so like people who aren't so technical could understand what that means? People who aren't that technical to explain how JavaScript indexing works. I, I think that'll be tricky. Yeah. Is Mar Martin's there? Last Martin to explain it. Uh, it sounds like Boston's here. Someone's coming. <laughs> OK. We have one, one more person joining us. Uh, so the I mean, with, with JavaScript indexing, one of the tricky parts is we pick up the HTML content initially, and we can index that right away. And rendering sometimes takes a little bit longer. So sometimes that's a matter of, I don't know, depending on the site, depending on uh, what all is happening, it can take. I don't know, minutes, hours, a few days, and something like that with this kind of delay there. So in particular, for news websites, I'd still recommend that you have some kind of static content, because we need to be able to index that as quickly as possible. Um, but uh, for any website that's more stable, then kind of this delay of a day or two, that won't change much. OK. Day or I, I've previously heard it was much longer than a day or two, so that's that's. It really depends. And it's something where the, the team is working on reducing that to make it as fast as possible, obviously. Um, but it's not the case that like you have to wait a month until your content is indexed. It's it's really kind of more a matter of like somewhere between a few minutes to maybe a couple of days. All right, thank you. All right. Let me just take a look at some of the questions that, that were submitted. Um, oh, big question about thin content. Um, we have a clothing e-commerce site. Um, let's see. With, I guess, different products that are very similar. And some of these are crawled but not indexed. Uh, would it be a good idea to exclude, I guess, the different variations from crawling and indexing? Uh, so in, in general, for especially for e-commerce sites, what we recommend is that you try to focus on making the product pages stand on their own and being really, I don't know, unique products, unique things that people are actually searching for. So if you have different variations, that could be something like sizes or different colors, then I would kind of fold those all of those into the same product. So that uh, we we tend to have fewer pages to crawl. They can be more visible in search because it's more concentrated. And then you don't have to worry about the situation like, is my green page also being indexed or not? You just have one product page, and it has different variations, different attributes that can apply to that. Specific to that answer and diagnosing it and the actual process of fixing it, um, have you got any plans to put the items that are in the coverage part of Search Console into an API where we can check this on a page level basis independently of the front end? Um, and as a follow on to that, there's only ever a thousand lines given in that. Um, when there's a couple of hundred thousand pages excluded or crawled but not indexed, it would be really helpful to get more than that 1,000. Um, plans. I, I don't know about plans. We, we do get that question a lot. Yeah. Though. So uh, that's something where I, I would love to see more features in the API. Mm -hmm. I, I think that helps a lot, especially the, the larger sites that can pull that data out and work through it. I, I think that would be really useful. But I don't know what, what the exact plans there would be. Yeah. I don't know. You know. Neither. No. No? No. I no. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Good. Then I'm not missing out. Um, OK, my site dropped for most of the queries that it ran for. Uh, for some of the queries, non-branded remains strong. Um, uh, let's see. Will Google ever look at the demoted content that was improved in the meantime to see if it fulfills the user needs better for previously ranking queries? Uh, yes. 
definitely. So here comes another Martin. Uh, so definitely, if something changed on your website and we crawled and re-indexed it, then we will take that into account. It's not that we're going to stop crawling uh, just because we kind of stop showing something as visible. Uh, so you don't need to noindex it. You don't need to block it by robots text. The general idea is if you if you have content that you do know you need to improve, then I would just improve it, ideally. Or if you really can't improve it because it's a lot of content that you are saying, well, I don't know what to do with this content, then maybe just removing it is fine. Um, but it's not the case that we would not update the website or update the content when we see it as being bad ones. If the user wanted to speed up that process, would a fetch and render help for pages where they have? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in the inspection URL inspection tool, you can submit for re recrawling or re-indexing. That definitely helps, but that's on a per-page basis. Yeah. So a sitemap file would probably help more if it's a broader change. Hi, John. Hi. Uh, regarding content, since we're on that topic, I do have a couple of questions. And, and the first one I'm hoping is a lot more straightforward. So for all intents and purposes, uh, for the sake of cleaning up or removing thin or low quality content pages from a website, is no inde indexing that content basically as effective as just taking the entire page down? Yes. OK. If it's not in our index, it's effectively down. I mean, it's still on your website. Mm -hmm. So in, in particular, if it's something that you say you want to keep it on your site because you think users on your site might want to find it when they kind of navigate within your site, then fine. Um, it removes it from the Google index, so we don't show it in the search results. And from there, we, we don't really care about like, what is actually on those pages. Oh, great, great. And, uh, and the second one, let me put my tinfoil hat on here, because um, I mean, I'm, I haven't really heard of it being spoken of before, but it's the idea of content dilution. So for example, I, I have a service that I use Copyscape basically to check for you know, copies of my content across the web. And I've seen many cases where we'll get absolutely crazy garbage domains, really, they look really sketchy, PDF files stuffed full of spun versions of my content many versions of PDF files, many versions of garbage landing pages that are actually cloaked and will redirect to something sketchy like online drug sales. Anyways, point being is, would it be, is it a possible thing that certain content gets spun so much in so many instances of garbage spam that the original content gets mistakenly identified as part of that too, if that makes any sense? I, I don't see that happening. So that's that's something. I mean, we we've seen that situation over, over and over again. I th I think pretty much every popular site is used as a seed for like a lot of these spammy sites that basically just scrape and spin content. So I I don't see that causing any problems. So there is a way to differentiate the fact that the source content is legitimate and it's not part of the fact that. You see it 200 other times uh, in other, you know, sketchy or spammy ways. Yeah, I, I don't see that being a problem. Yeah, I mean, we look at the website overall as well when it comes to quality. So, if overall the website is good, then we, we should be able to treat that content appropriately. Uh, if overall the website is is low quality, like these spammy scraped sites, then we should just treat that as spam and handle it like that. OK, that's good to know. Thank you, because that's certainly a factor out of everyone's, every webmaster's control. So yeah. OK. Great. Thank you. I, I think the same thing happens with links as well. Like A lot of the spammers will, will basically take links to popular sites and put them on their sites and say, like, look, I'm linking to CNN. Therefore, my content must be legitimate. And that, that doesn't change anything. So if you see random scraped sites linking to your site, that's not really something you need to worry about. OK. That's a relief. Great. Thank you. Cool. All right. Whoa. There's one from Martin, just in time. <laughs> Does the change for Chrome 74 impact Google's ability to trigger infinite scroll on pages? 
Uh, to a certain degree, yes. Um, basically, there's not a fundamental change in how we're doing it, but as we now support a bunch of features that you might use, such as um, intersection observer, for instance, yes, you can now use that without a polyfill in Googlebot. However, that being said, make sure to test this. I know the testing tools haven't been updated yet, but make sure that the content you care about is indexed, is being indexed. And honestly, if I were you, I would just keep the polyfill for a couple of more, I don't know how long. We don't have a timeline. But like, keep the polyfill around. Uh, there might still be benefits for having it until you can definitely test our testing tools. So yeah. There was also a question earlier, I think, from Barry. Um, Hi, did Barry. We, did we switch to the new version of Chrome completely for crawling and indexing? Yes. And when was it? Yes. <laughs> so um, the thing, the thing that we do is, um, as you know, we keep experimenting on new stuff with Googlebot on very, very small sets of URLs, basically very small samples. Sometimes just like basically a couple of URLs, really. Um, but we continuously improve or in increase the amount of uh, sites that we would be crawling with Googlebot over the last couple of months, very carefully monitoring what was happening. The things, the issue that we confirmed um, that happened a couple of months back has nothing to do with rendering. Um, but yeah, so we have been increasing, uh, continuously increasing the sample size of the URLs that we were crawling with the new Googlebot and have ramped, up, ramped it up to 100% already. Uh, I don't know the exact day when we did, to be honest. I don't have it on top of my head, because it just went smoothly. And Was it from like 10% to like 100%, or was it like? No, 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 no. no. It was uh, less than 1%, 1%, 10%, 20%, 35%, 40%. Have observed. Um, so, if you could send me an email with exact sorry. dates and percentages. Sorry? If you could send me an email with exact dates and percentages, that would be useful. I'm just joking. <laughs> I, would have, I don't know if we have like, that much. I'm joking. I'm joking. The previous crawls. But um, basically, it was a, a pretty rolling thing. I just sampled it at random points in time okay, um, yeah. and checked in with the rendering team. Zoe is in the rendering team, the person that was yesterday with me on stage for that specific session. And I would, I was as excited about it as everyone else was. So I was like, "So Zoe, how so are we doing?" Right? This, so how, I have observed these things, but I don't think I know the dates specifically. But the whole process started a few months ago, or a year ago, or in terms of the one percent testing. Can we say that? I have no idea. I don't know. So like, <laughs> I, I remember. So I remember I talked to Zoe in December last year, and I think that was when, or November. No, it was November. In November we were at ten percent. Oh, OK. Interesting. Very nice. And the indexing bugs have nothing at all to do with this at all. We're talking indexing, not rendering. I know, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> They're all connected in some way. Fair question, but no. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, and the caching has nothing to do. The cache date has nothing to do with this either. No. OK. I, I'm still quite surprised how many people ask about cache. Cache is like a nice, convenient feature that we offer, but it is not related to what I get. I'm sure you get it a lot, but I get like five to 10 emails a day saying, why is the cache date a Google wrong? Like a month ago, like from a month ago. I'm like, I don't know. So, so you're that. saying the cache date is related to the emails that you get? Yes. <laughs> Do you Direct correlation. filter your emails based on the cache date? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Totally different question. We're selling variations of Mexican flags. Cool. Um, the variations are linked with Mexican table, Mexico table flag, Mexico hand waving flag, etc. Our preferred page in search is cross-linked from the variations with Mexico. Uh, is this anchor text OK, or should we use Mexico flag for our preferred flag? I, I think you can link either way. Right? The, we, we do use the anchor text uh, from links as, as a way to understand the context of the page a little bit better. 
But if your whole website is about flags, you don't need to mention flags with every city and every country that you have there. Wouldn't it be the flag type that would be probably your preferred anchor text in that example? Table flag sure. thing yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 I I mean it depends on how you have it set up. If you have one page from Mexican flags and from there you link to the different variations, then sure. Yeah. All right. Um, the indexing issue, or an indexing issue, but stories seem not to be surfing in a realistically timely manner, uh, particular for keywords, individuals for whom we have very solid rank. Stories are popping up a day or two later, or not at all. Uh, well, we're seeing fairly good outlets surfacing. Some of the results are several days old or even weeks old in favor of other outlets with more newsy content. Uh, is there some other indexing issue with newsy content? I'm not aware of any issue. You guys know? No? I can. So I, this is one of the things I work on every day. And there are occasional issues, but nothing right now. OK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <so laughs> it's, I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. OK. I, I mean, it's always good to have kind of a neutral confirmation. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 to be fair, as an extension to that question, though, there is still the outstanding bug of Google picking up incorrect dates on news items. And I'm interested whether or not the new rendering is going to make any difference to that, because my supposition is it's picking up the incorrect dates from ad containers where it is rendering the contents of them. So um, I, it, it may or may not be related to what this question asker is asking. But certainly, I have seen examples where a news account is something, the wrong date is picked up, and then that news piece So that may be something that that person should look at, is what the what Google is yeah. perceiving okay. the published data as. So, uh, I, Michael. Hi, thank you for uh, answering my question. It's just, uh, I think, like in the last uh, 48 to 72 hours, um, like no complaints about sort of the sketchy um, outlets in my in my sector surfacing because sometimes you wonder like where is this coming from? They're all legitimate outlets, but definitely seeing um, stories where like there is kind of news in our sector, but there's stuff from like a week ago, and then you as you keep sort of scrolling down, it's like a week, two weeks, a month ago, and you're like scratching your head saying. There is some new stuff going on. And then it does pop up sort of a day later, sometimes not at all, though. Yeah. No. I, I don't know. I mean, some, sometimes we do have weird fluctuations that happen. So it's, it might be something that's just something temporarily out of sync. Um, with, with the dates question, one thing I heard from, from someone at I.O., which I, I don't know is still the case, is sometimes there's a mismatch between the top stories date and the normal search results date. Um, that's something that I thought we had fixed, but uh, I, I need to look into if that's still, still an issue. Um, Great to see how to roll out to the web. I know there's a search appearance filter in Search Console for how to snippets that show in search results. Uh, but what about when it rolls out to smart displays? Uh, will there be a way to measure that in Search Console? If so, will the voice query show up? And will the reporting show you how many steps the user got through? I have no idea. Anyone? Any takers? Oh. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I mean, a lot of these things, we're, we're still very early stages, so we will have to see how, how that works out. Um, I'm curious to see how, how that ends up working with, especially the smart displays. I, I can see that being pretty useful. But I don't know how, how that will show up in Search Console. We'll see. Uh, is crawl budget more a matter of crawl depth or of a volume of pages? Uh, so for us, crawl budget is essentially how many URLs we would fetch from a website on a day. Uh, so that's kind of the 
I guess the, the volume of requests that we'd be able to get. Uh, for most websites, that's not an issue because we can get as much as we want. And for really large websites, it is more, a little, more of a problem uh, because we feel we're, we're more limited by the server resources and we don't want to cause problems by trying to get all of their fresh content as quickly as possible. And usually, the, the hard part there is not so much finding that limit, uh, but balancing the needs of what, what we would crawl during that time. So on the one hand, we want to get all of the fresh stuff. So we'd have to look at the home pages regularly, the more higher level category pages regularly, because from there, the content is linked. Then we need to get that freshly linked content. But we also need to update the existing content over time and kind of make sure that we're not missing anything that uh, otherwise isn't like, directly linked on the page. And uh, that also includes all of the embedded resources that we pull in from JavaScript, uh, CSS, images. All of that comes into play there, too. So it's not crawl depth, essentially. It's more that the depth we try to pick up by, by scheduling the different pages. Uh, it's really just purely a matter of number of requests that we make to the server uh, so that we try to stay below low a number that uh, ends up causing problems for the website. Can I specify something about that answer? Sure. You started it by saying we look at the certain number of URLs for each one of the stuff, for each site that we're crawling. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned URLs a couple of times through that. Um, is that tied to a hard number of URLs or a total transfer size? In as much that if I reduced a page's website, a website's pages from 10 megs to 300k, would that dramatically increase the number of pages they can crawl? I don't think that would change anything. So it's a pure so URL so request. It's not. Uh, I mean, size. what? Yeah. I mean, what? What happens? What, what sometimes happens is if you have a large response, mm -hmm. then it just takes longer for us to get that, and with that, we'll probably crawl less because like, we're like trying sure. to avoid having too many uh, simultaneous connections to the server. Uh, so if you have a smaller response size, and obviously we can get more simultaneous requests, and we could theoretically get a little bit more. But it's not the case that if you reduce the size of your pages, and suddenly we'll start crawling. It's also, it's also that when the response takes a long time, it's not just the size of the response, it's also the response time. Servers tend to respond slower when they're overloaded or about to be overloaded. So that's also a signal that we're picking up, like, ooh, this takes a really long time until we're getting data. On the server, maybe we should look into the, the crawl limits, the, crawl, uh, the host load uh, on this particular server so that we're not toppling the server over. But that also kind of a resource on the page that was served potentially by a third party was being slow to respond. Oh, third party? No. 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 OK. Uh, we, we look at it on, on a per server level. Mm -hmm. So if you have content from a CDN, or from, from other networks, other places, then that would apply to their crawl code, cool. essentially. Because like how, how slow an embedded resource is doesn't really affect the rest of the crawling on your site. OK, thank you. Sure. Um, we're trying to clear our sites from being banned on Safe Search. Uh, some of our pages are now available under Safe Search in Europe, but not available in the USA. Is geography a part of the factor that determines what is adult content and what isn't? I have no idea. Safe I search. Special. I, my understanding was that safe search is safe search and it's not mm -hmm. different across different locations. But it sounds like you're seeing something different. So uh, it's, it's hard to say. I, I don't know. I, I can ask the, the team to see if we can figure something out for the next one. Um, is ability to pull all Search Console data into Data Studio anywhere on the roadmap, especially page speed and errors? So we don't even have page speed in the UI yet. So <laughs> that would be a little bit early. But I, I think, in general, I'd be a fan of having all data available for, for an API. Uh, but it takes a lot of work to get that there and to maintain all of that. So I don't know. There is a community connector for Lighthouse, at least, for Data Studio. Yeah. Um, but the Lighthouse team at Google probably could do a better job of integrating that as well. OK. <laughs> OK. You know anyone from Lighthouse? I do. Yes. OK. You should tell I, I have to know that for that particular thing okay. I do. Cool. Um, I'll, I'll ping them. 
<laughs> oh, he's doing it live. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> can you see me? Just, me up, so <laughs> if you could just CC me on the watching. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to use instant messages. for the next time. OK, let me just uh, see some questions here live. Uh, I've been noticing that content hidden under tabs on the mobile site is not showing the same way in the search results as was promised. What gives, Google? Um, so what, what generally happens with, with content that is hidden behind a tab is we will use it for indexing. We'll use it for ranking. Uh, so that's something from, especially with the, the mobile first indexing, when we index the mobile version of the page, that's not a problem. Uh, so it shouldn't affect ranking. But what will happen is we won't show it in the snippet. Uh, in particular, the snippet, it, we, we try to separate that out because if we show something in the snippet, it feels like we're really promising the user that they'll see this when they visit that page. Uh, so if we know that this is kind of hidden by default, then we won't show it in a snippet. Uh, but from a ranking point of view, it, it'll rank normally. So that should be fine. Um, I have 300 URLs in robots text file with uh, disallowed URL parameter. They also have no index, no follow tag. But in Search Console, they're still shown as indexed. What's up? So you, you're doing almost too much to, to make that happen. Uh, in particular, if it's blocked by robots text, we don't know if there's a no index tag there. Uh, so what will happen is we will index the URL without its content. And that's probably what you're seeing in Search Console as the index count there. So what you need to do to prevent those from being indexed at all is to allow crawling and instead to only use the no index meta tag on the page. And then as we recrawl those pages, we'll see no index, and we can drop them completely out of the index. And Again, just, just to be clear, it's not that we're indexing the content on those pages that are disallowed from crawling. It's really just we're indexing the URL, and we're picking it up based on links to that page. Maybe we're showing the anchor text as a title for that URL, but the snippet should be like we, we can't show you anything, and it links to the help page on robots text. Uh, the Search Console show different menus to different websites. For example, I have one with a products category in an e-commerce site and not in another one. Uh, yes. So we try to show you the categories where you have data for. So if you don't have specific structured data types, then it doesn't make sense to show you that report because there's nothing to show. Uh, so some sites will, will have things like products, if they have product structured data that we picked up, or how-to, if you have how-to information marked up. But uh, other sites won't have that in Search Console. Uh, why doesn't Adobe Reader rank for click here? I don't know. I don't know. Well, what are you trying to find when you search for click here? That seems like a very weird query to search for. It's a historical reference to, yes. <laughs> I should elaborate? No. You, you, I was just referencing your, your comment about anchor text and links and stuff. So I, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, what should we show for click here? It seems like one of those queries where like, no, I'm just... you could argue what it should be showing. It's so ambiguous. Yes. <laughs> you show W3.org, which seems an appropriate answer. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Some place to click, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, info operator, it's gone now. Can you confirm that in the site move or page move URL inspection tool, we can expect the new URL to be canonical? Uh, uh, specifically, when the site colon queries showing to me. OK, I'm not completely sure what, what you're asking. Um, but yes, the info colon query oper operator is gone. I think that's been gone for a while now. Uh, we recommend using the URL inspection tool to look up the canonical if you were using that to pick the, look at the canonical. Uh, the site colon operator doesn't show you the canonical. So with the site colon, especially if you've done a site move, 
And we'll, we'll try to be helpful and say, like, if you're searching for the old domain, then we'll show you the old domain, even though we've processed that site move already. Uh, so that's sometimes a little bit confusing. So with the site colon operator, you tend not to see the canonical. Sometimes if you look at the cache page, you'll see that we cache the new URL instead, which is also a sign that the site move has gone through. Um, that was a great session at I.O. with Martin. Ooh, yeah, that nice. one. Oh, that no, one. That yeah. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really love that session. Uh, when testing a landing page URL in the structured data testing tool, it reports error in breadcrumbs. When pasting the source code of the same page, it doesn't show those errors anymore. Um, I checked through the code and can't find what the problem is. I don't know. It's like a bug on our side. That's that sounds like a bug. Can what, what you can, yeah, I'll do that in a second. Um, <laughs> what you can do is you can post the, uh, if you feel like it, you can post the URL here. It, it has it. OK, yeah. perfect. I'll take a look at the URL and see if I can spot a problem. And if it's a bug in structured data testing tool, I'll be happy to filing it accordingly. Cool. And thanks for the feedback on the session. <laughs> um, Google is not showing any lazy loaded image alt text. What am I doing wrong? Uh, first, I followed Google's advice on lazy loading. Cool. Added data alt and no script to my code. Rendering is fine. And there's a link to a screenshot. OK. OK. That sounds like you want to look at it, I guess. Yes. OK. <laughs> Sorry, the page does not exist. OK. Mm. Um, OK. So <laughs> generally speaking, uh, I am surprised. So if I understand correctly, you're lazy loading the images, which means you have the images in the original source code. And that should include the alt text as well. You don't really lazy load alt text normally. You should have that in the regular HTML. If you have a no script uh, fallback, then that should also just show up. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but if if you mean like you're infinite, like you like an infinite scroll kind of thing and load the entire content um, dynamically, then that can happen. There is only so much that we do in terms of infinite scrolling. We need to improve our guidelines for that one. I agree. Um, we will do that, I guess. Now that you sit next to me and nod, I, that's probably me, so I have more work now. Lazy <laughs> <laughs> Martin. Uh, so yeah, if it's lazy loading, then that's something that can sometimes go wrong a little bit, um, especially because we can't just, like, in, obviously, we can't infinite scroll, surprisingly. We can't just take infinite time to do that. Um, but I don't have good guidance on that right now for you here at impromptu. We would have to like look into this in more detail. That's what we plan on doing after I go. Yeah. Cool. All right. John, can you tell me when Google is going to fix the cache error? Not a single web page is cached after the 10th of April. And it's affecting my rankings as well. Um, so there's a bit more here. So Martin says web pages are being cached. I, so I, I, I looked, so I, I've seen I've seen this on, on Twitter a few times, and I looked at some of the sites that do update fairly frequently, and they seem to be cached fairly fine. So I think this what what you might be seeing is just some side effect of some of the indexing issues that we've had in the past, and maybe it's just taking a little bit more time for the cache to update. Uh, but in general, the cache page is not reflected of or reflective of the index page, so that would not be affecting any rankings. So if you're seeing issues with the rankings, then that would not be from the cache page. Um, we're a news website, and we disappeared from the top stories. We think Google is confusing our site with a forum, uh, since we have structured data. What can we do? I, go, well, I, get, I guess the structured data is news article structured data. So that Maybe would be fine. Perform like its Q and A page. I don't know. So, uh, in in general, I think the the important part to know is we we don't show all pages in the top stories section. 
that's it's an organic search feature. And sometimes we, we show these pages there, sometimes we don't show them there. It's not that there's anything manual on our side where we'd say these sites would not be shown in the top stories just because they also happen to have a forum or some kind of discussion on those pages or in the site somewhere as well. Uh, so that's something that would be totally unrelated. I think we, we've had a question from you a few times about the top story section. It's, it's really it's an organic search feature. It's not that there's something manual that's blocking your site in particular from, from appearing there. Um, All cache pages. Oh, no, your cache pages are 404. Yeah. OK. But I, I think. I, I'm not saying that would have any effect on ranking whatsoever. I, I wasn't about to say I'm that just agreeing thing, that I am saying 404. The thing on. that I would like to call out is this question had two parts. Yes. And there's like, it, it's not catching websites, and that's like hurting my rankings. And those two are not Completely related. Completely disconnected, as far like, as I'm concerned, as well, yes. Yeah. OK. So just, Barry just has to make some that links. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we, we have seen this from, from a few people uh, with the cache page. So I, I know there are people at Google looking into this to see what, what is happening there specifically. But uh, like, like I mentioned, the cache page is not reflective of what we have indexed. A pretty direct way to see that is all of the JavaScript-based websites, we cache the HTML version of the page. We don't cache the render version of the page. So those are completely different pieces of content there. Uh, we, we do try to keep the cache more or less up to date so that we can show it to users when, when they need to look at the cache page. Uh, but for the most part, it's, it's really separate from, from the rest of crawling, indexing, and ranking. Cool. I think we made it through all of the questions that were submitted. Anything else from any of your sides, from any of you? Uh, from my side, I mean, I, multiple people have asked it, and I asked it last time I was sat here as well. It's just basically, I want everything else that's in Search Console available via an API, or at the very least, ported across to Data Studio. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can, can you ping someone on that, Martin? Yeah. I just ping. Uh, again, <laughs> CC me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, I think we're talking with the Search Console people quite a lot, and um, we forward. We, we hear from a lot of people that they want more stuff in the yeah. API. So mm. we, we always push, push for that. It's always tricky because there are limited number of people. So on the one hand, add more features to Search Console, yeah. move uh, some of the old features from Search Console to a new one, or should they do more in the API? Like, it's, it's hard to find a balance there. I do have a better question than that, though. Um, okay. You did announce, I don't know, a couple of months ago, the, or a month or two ago, the indexing API for jobs and something else. Uh, thank you. But I, jobs was the only one I cared about, so that's why I remembered it. Sorry. Um, any plans to roll that out any further? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think. And since it's still fairly new, it's something where I expect the team will be collecting feedback over time to see how it works out, how people are able to implement it or not, mm -hmm. and uh, also to see, does this really change the way that we can crawl and index content? Mm -hmm. um, or is it just like another complex feature that people have to implement that doesn't actually change things in a way that it affects them? So that's, that's something where I expect to for, for us to kind of collect feedback over, over a while and then at some point to figure out, can we expand this to other kind of structured data types where it makes sense to get this, this kind of content fresher? Could we expand it to the general web as well? I don't know. Really hard to say. How's it working for jobs? Well, it's, uh, the concept of it is fantastic. It, uh, I won't comment as to how well it works or doesn't work because I haven't looked at that. But it would answer a lot of other problems. Um, not not specifically the general web, but um, rapid indexation of news stories is something that any site that's dedicated to that struggles with. Um, I think we all try and give you guys as many signals as possible to come and index something. Mm -hmm. But then these sites all have tens of millions of pages as well, and I understand that crawl budget on them is a is a finite resource. Um, so if we had a way of just saying, hey, listen, these are the you know the, the eleven hundred news articles that have been published today, that would be hugely beneficial. 
because uh, it'd save us spending inordinate amounts of time experimenting with things like PopSop and historically PopSop HubBub and so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah. So specifically for new site. Well, I, yeah, I don't want to restrict it just to that, but I think anywhere where it's important to have um, the you know uh, up to date and immediate information, so outside of news that might be possible. But for me, I'm thinking. News. Okay. Cool. I don't know, Barry. What do you think? Does your content need to be indexed faster? <laughs> no, absolutely not. The second I post it, it's literally an index within a few seconds. It's amazing. I, I know, but despite, I mean, Barry produces yeah five pieces of content a day, pieces of content a day, which is phenomenal. But when you <laughs> extrapolate that out to a thousand or fifteen hundred, some of them get missed. Okay, I'm not a content spammer, so <laughs> don't think there's a challenge, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a question for all of you. You're all at uh, I.O., right, all of you? Yeah. Or no? Could you tell us, your, each one of you, tell us what was the most um, important or most, you know, what, what announcement was the most exciting for you guys individually? I have a very clear opinion on that, but I'll shut up. Okay. Oh, oh, uh, the Google Buy. Uh, for me, it was the, the live captioning, the videos. Oh yeah, the live captioning. Live ca okay, that so it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. He said personally, it didn't have to be. Fair enough. Then live captioning, yeah. definitely live captioning. Yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Like if if we had that now, we wouldn't have to have people captioning these hangouts, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I I love I love that, <laughs> that people are transcribing these hangouts. Oh, I, I think that's fantastic. Oh. I think I think that someone is going to write that. At some point in the next 24 hours to get published. Wow. Well, doesn't YouTube I, transcribe them automatically? <laughs> I, I think I think it's really cool, especially the kind of a combination of that with, with translations. I, I think that would be really cool. Sounds like a spammer's delight. I don't know. I, you know, now that I think about it, so I think the most useful was live captioning, and the coolest I think was the AR from search. Oh, the, the shark. shark! The shark, the shark. was amazing. You think that was cool? Interesting. I would have gone with the uh, yeah, podcast the audio. Company. Yeah, I find that cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sharks are cool. Yeah, definitely sharks are cool. Sorry. Sharks are definitely cool. Sharks are cool, but also the fact that they use the 3D graphics format that I have been advocating for a couple years back. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> there you go. I would think the pod for me it was probably the podcast audio searching in audio files, which obviously has to be good with transcribing automatically. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, the, I think the podcast is also really neat. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I think there's lots of cool stuff. So hard what's, what's always, I, I find a little bit frustrating with, with IO is that uh, we, we all try to get as much stuff launched by IO as possible. And we, we do manage to get a lot of stuff launched there. But sometimes like it's almost ready. And we want to kind of get people excited about it, but it's not ready yet. <laughs> and I think the, the worst ones are the ones like, oh, it's it's live, and you can have it if you're in the US. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or or I'll take a photo of this QR code for this wonderful access. Um, <clears throat> well, I, <laughs> QR codes are cool too. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so I, I think with that, we're pretty much out of time. Uh, if more questions come up, feel free to drop them into the next Hangout. I probably have some set up for next week or the week after that. Uh, otherwise, feel free to jump by the, the Web Monster Help Forum and post there, or try to reach us on Twitter, where we're all hanging out as well. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Safe flights home. Bye-bye. Thanks. <laughs>